convaincu, mais l'enfant il a la tête de poisson, avec la tête de purée, c'est la to another very special edition of DD Talks. Today we're talking marriage and you know love is such a beautiful thing and uh, love is beautiful. Marriage is phenomenal. I mean if you if you are in a beautiful marriage you should really be enjoying it. So guys um, I put out a, a questionnaire today I said what kind of topics would you like us to discuss? And I had a feedback. A lot of you responded and gave me suggestions of what we should talk about. In one of the topics, you know, stood out. And uh, the person who suggested the topic was ready. Said, you know what, Diane, I'm ready to come on board and discuss this topic. He is, he's married, so he's coming from a married perspective. You know, he's a, 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 a well-known legend in the in entertainment industry you know like his lived in south africa and all oh, whatnot i'll be introducing him in just a few minutes in the meantime guys go ahead share tag and invite we have a lead show guys all your married folks or all you're wanting to get married let us know if you are going to marry for love or marry for convenience you know what i mean um which one is your side uh, do you believe that you could you should marry for love or you should marry for convenience and what's this whole thing about love anyway? Is love for real? The divorce rate is so high. We are wondering if love is the reason why people should marry. So guys, go ahead, share, tag, and invite. I need you guys to be on board. Hello, Michelle. Hello, guys. Keep coming through. Keep coming through. Send me some love, some hearts. Uh, Stan Leon is in the building. Donald, I see you. Petit Lebota. Lebota, send me an invite so that I can bring you on board. In the meantime, let's continue. You know, because my guest today is, you know, has a very lit personality. That's why I brought in DJ Arafat to bring and introduce the show. Because, you know, he has that kind of vibe that goes on with him. So DJ Arafat will continue to bring that. While DJ uh, Rene, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Guys, we need to know, you know, everybody is either looking to get into marriage or come out of marriage. Right? They're getting into marriage or coming out of marriage. Which side are you on? And if you're about to get into marriage, what kind of marriage are you trying to get into? Are you marrying for love or are you marrying for convenience? So let's find out your take in this conversation. But as somebody who has been in the business for a long time, let's bring him on board. Libito, Petit Libito, please uh, send me an invite so I can bring you on board. So let's have this conversation. He's not in the building. Usually I like to have my guests in the studio, in-house. This is your host, Diane Diger, the host of DD Talks. I do this twice a week usually, sometimes maybe more, you know, and uh, hi, Anne. Uh, so I do this maybe twice or three times a week, you know, depending on, you, you know, what's going on. Hey, by the way, we have the space. So we're looking for that. All we do is engage people in thought-provoking conversations. We want to challenge your mind. We want to challenge your thoughts. What do you think? What do you have to say? You know, so let's, uh, let's get on board. Let's start having this conversation. 
Uh, Petit Libouton, are you are you here? You're around. Let, let me hear from you. You know, send me an invite so that I can accept you. I want to bring you on board and quickly introduce you. In the meantime, continue to listen to my boy DJ Arafat. Rest in peace, Arafat, man. This guy was a legend. Died so young, so young, guys. So um, let me continue to play that while I wait for our VIP guest today, all the way from Texas. You know, I'm waiting for you to send me that invite so that I can bring you on board, bruh. Where are you? I can't find you just yet. Just yet, just yet, just yet. So you need to... Um, so I need you to... Come on board, boy. Come on, boy. Send me an invite so that I can... Send me an invite to join the show so that I can accept you. All right? And so my special guest is... Um, MC Lebouteau, Petit Lebouteau, Lebota. <laughs> I can't get that name right. But you know, he's my special guest. He's been doing marriage for a long time. And so I can't seem to get you on board, boy. I see you live. I see you've joined the cast, but I need for you to send me an invite so I can accept you. But let me see if I can do that if you're not able to. Oh, okay. Hey, you are in the building. I think because, because you're here, let me welcome you with Arafa. Welcome. See your volume. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you up it just a notch? You can go. All right, all right, all right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Let me see if I can increase my volume from that side. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome to the show. My special guest for today, guys, is none other than um, Petit Lobuto. He goes by Petit Lobuto, uh, Libota, right? Libota. Mm -hmm. Yes, Petit Libota. Welcome to the show. This is your first time that I'm having you on the show. We were supposed to do something earlier this year, but I think your schedule did not permit. So mm -hmm. welcome back, and I'm glad to have you live today. Thank you for having me, uh, Didi Talk. It's a privilege to be on your show. You look so glamorous, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And you know, you're always looking sharp anyway. You're always looking dope. So guys, before you joined, I was telling them that uh, I put out a survey earlier to have suggestions about topic and you were like let's let's talk about this one and we are talking today guys in case you're just wondering i'm going to let you introduce yourself tell them a little bit about who you are so that um the audience gets to know you better because we're in a conversation so says, let me give you a few minutes to introduce yourself and then we'll come back and I'll talk about the topic so we're talking today about Marriage, Thank guys, you. You for love or for convenience. All right, so go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much for having me on the DT show. It's a privilege to be with you. Um, I once had a chance to be with you in Maryland, but for some reasons I could not make it. So when I saw you today, I told myself this could be a chance, you know. Um, Petit Libota is my name. I'm, I'm a Cameroonian and precisely from uh, the Western province. I'm an Anglophone Bamilike. So okay. I speak French and I speak English. The uh, province. Born, <laughs> <laughs> born and bred in Bamenda, studied in Bamenda, studied at uh, Boya and traveled to South Africa 2008 for greener pasture. Uh, spent like 10 years in South Africa, visited the United States and came back again. Um, Currently, I work with uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, uh, and at the same time, I do manage events, I do coordinate events, and I'm into show business. So um, I would like to talk about um, marriage, and we'll be talking about marriage being convenient or marriage being for love. So basically, those are the two concepts that we'll be talking about on DD Show. Right. So I'd like to structure... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, so I was just agreeing with you that that is, in fact, our topic for the day. So really, uh, first of all, you are you have been happily married. 
That's right. Is that is that your true confession? That you've been yes. happily married for uh, how long? I've been married for eleven years. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. So congratulations, by the way, for surviving marriage way past 10 years and, and still continuing on and doing it strong. You know, we're living in a society today where uh, the divorce rate has gotten so high, right? The mm -hmm. divorce rate is so high. And the question begets, is, is the divorce rate so high because people are not getting into marriage for the right reasons? You know, so what is your take on that anyway? Maybe we'll begin from that angle. All right. Uh, what I think is that the divorce rate is higher uh, compared to the past because people get into marriage for the wrong reasons. And mm. uh, in relation to what we're talking about today, getting married for convenience simply means that you're getting married either for practical reasons, either for political reasons, or basically for financial what, sustainability. For yeah. <laughs> The, the, the reason, the reason I say so is because some people get married, talking about political reasons, some people get married because either they want, they want docky or they want reputation. It means they want to gain a, a certain, uh, perhaps diplomatic status in a society, uh, which they never had that chance to, to accomplish in life. You know, if you learn that Didi Talk is perhaps a diplomat or she's a woman of substance or she's a woman of valor or she's a state woman, you want her to carry your name uh, because you want to belong to that clan because you never had a chance to go to school and all that. So for that, okay. you want to gain that reputation in the society, okay? And people also get married for financial sustainability. Perhaps um, you're broke, you're, you're a broke guy, you know, you're turn 40 and life is still getting so bad, you don't know your left and right, and you find a successful woman and you, all you're trying to do is that you want to understand her paycheck, where she works, and how she manages her money. And last but not the least, people also want Doki. I'm not going to dwell so much on that. You know, well, we're not going to capitalize on that because of, you know, uh, <laughs> given the platform that we are on. But it is a factor. Um, so sometimes circumstantially, uh, when you find yourself in a, maybe in a foreign land, you know, um, you may have to succumb to, to that where mm -hmm. that may be your towards marriage, you know, and maybe do you believe that that kind of marriage would um, have a lifespan, a long lifespan, uh, a lifespan that would take to forever? No. Or is that, grounds, is that a setup for failure? Marriage for convenience, it simply means that there is something taking you into that relationship, which means if that thing no longer exists, then the marriage collapses. Say, for example, you're in Cameroon and you want to come to the United States and you meet an American. And the rule states clearly that if you get married to an American, you, you will have to come over. But you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have any kind of emotion uh, towards this person, no, no kind of filial love towards this person, no romantic feelings over this person. You know, the line of communication, it doesn't tally. And owing to the fact that you, you're not economically viable, you're just trying to sway your way into another country through that, that kind of a, of a relationship. So when you get in now and you face that person, there's a lot of things, uh, or there are a lot of things that you might not uh, be able to, uh, to accept, you know. Perhaps he was a short guy, perhaps he wasn't charismatic, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and... You know, you touched on something, you said perhaps he was a short guy. Um... So I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm very tall, you know. So I'm six foot. So I'm also I'm I'm kind of particular, right? You know, like you can't be short now when you're coming towards me. Yeah. I didn't uh, have to move it. Like I'm not trying to bend down. I'm not trying to stoop down to kiss my guy. You know, I want to look up. I just feel like there's, there's an element of romance to that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the reason I'm not trying to say you know I like short guys because they're so meticulous. You know. They pay so much attention on the fact that they're down there, so they want to be meticulous in life. They articulate very well, you know, they mind their steps. But the reason why I say short is because I've had an experience where this lady left all the way and came over. And when she came, she said, Oh boy, oh yeah, picture of it, she don't have a down. I don't can't see that party man for airport mass. I don't be that party man there. You know, you want to cuddle in your car <laughs> and, and think all the way like this. But when it's time for you to stand and then 
But you know, I mean, they do say though that uh, when it comes to the romantic side of things, when you're in bed, height is insignificant, right? It doesn't really matter. So, you know, for people who really don't have height issues, you know, you're fine. You're fine with that, right? But there are some people that that is a classification. I don't think that that's considered in a bracket of convenience, right? But when you're settling, when you get to a point where it's about settling and it really is more about you just want to marry, you start eliminating some of the things that you say, you know what, this may not be a factor anymore. Like I'm not particular about height or size or certain things, right? You eliminate some of those criteria. Everybody so correct. Sure that, yes. Okay, this is what we're trying to say here. This is what we're saying, that for convenience, you, you, uh, you, you, you overlook all those things, and then you come in. And then when you come in now, you start, you start to make excuses, you understand? But mm -hmm. now, talking about intimacy, talking about love, talking about a relationship that's built on a solid foundation of love, all those things, they really, they, they really don't matter. You know, you just... Play with, you want to have somebody that can understand you, somebody that is selfless. That's all you think about, you know. So we're trying to distinguish, we're trying to draw a line between marriage for conveniency and, and, and marriage out of love. Talking about my case, I, find, I, I found myself in a situation where I was a student in South Africa and my wife was a student. You know, we didn't have anything, you know, we were just students. So um, our relationship was built on, on, on emotions, on love, on feeling, on personalities. You know, we had that kind of a positive energy towards each other. And, and that's why every day to me, it's new because the foundation was emotion. So everything that comes to add onto our relationship is a plus. You understand? You know, you, okay, I'm glad you said you married young, right? So I threw, uh, someone uh, shared the topic in another forum that I belong to. And uh, the argument was, if you are young, it's okay to marry for love. But if you're older, you should marry maybe for convenience. So like convenience is, uh, there are more factors that you should consider. The question sometimes is you marry when you're young. Yes, you're young and, and foolish, you don't really take into consideration a lot of things you're just it's all about purely affection you're not considering where you're headed you're not really thinking long term you're just like you're more concerned about you know what this is how i feel about this person and i want to feel vested and so you go for it but as you mature there are other things that you start considering like you know what yes i'm, I'm crazy about them they're maybe they look good they're great and everything but is their vision something that i i partake in where they're headed in life is that the direction i want to go you know, so you begin to factor in more things. I don't know if there's necessarily things that will fall under the category of uh, I, uh, that's a convenience factor, but you do have a criteria that you need to establish for a, a, for a lifetime partner. By I the mean, way, hold on, hold on, before you respond, guys, if you are just joining us, we are having a conversation today and it's about marriage. The topic is, uh, should you marry for love? And I'm talking, my guest today is uh, Petit Libota. He's joining me all the way from Texas. He's been married for 11 years strong. And um, he's, he has an argument that love is a beautiful thing and you should marry for love. But uh, anyway, we're looking at the pros and cons of which side of marriage should you take. So go ahead and, and, and continue the conversation. By the way, go ahead and share, 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 share. And invite more people to join the conversation. We are reading your comments as we go along. Yes. All right. Uh... I'll do that. I'll do that, Diane. And for those that are watching right now, if you're joining, keep on sharing and try to learn something. If you have questions, please, you're more than welcome to ask your questions. If we're not able to provide help right now, we might come on a later date and do a kind of a follow-up. So you're not going to be left uh, behind. Um, right. Didi, this is what I'm saying, right? Don't get, people shouldn't get me wrong. Convenience is very, very important. It's key to a successful marriage because you want to get married to a woman that uh, that has a vision, right? You also want to right. get married to a man that has a vision, right? But what we're saying right mm -hmm. here is that um, the, the first step, if you want to build a house, you need a solid foundation, right? You sure do. You sure do. Everybody, everybody can be a house. I mean, we, we live That would be a house. Before Roland, you watch right now, it would be a house. But houses in different, different categories, right? Mm -hmm. So... If, if Didi wants to build a, a three-story, then she must be ready to get the right materials. She must be ready to get the right structure. If 
if you want to get into a relationship, ask yourself the first question, the basic questions. Do I like this person? Mm -hmm. I don't think about the fact that she's an, an MP, she's a CEO, or she's an engineer. Do I like this person? Just, just taking a first sight. I believe in love in first sight. Do I like this person? Don't ask the question that where does she work? At first sight? Hey guys, if you're calling your Botas phone, please leave the guy alone. Do not call and interrupt him. He's on a call right now. <laughs> I don't know. Each time they try to command or share, uh, they try to, I don't know. I got my phone. My phone is freezing. So I didn't get what you said. No, I was saying, did you mentioned something about you believe in love at first sight. And I'm saying you, you really do believe in love at first sight. <laughs> is yeah, I, kind of, kind of to an extent because for me, if I see something that I like, there's, there's, there has to be that connection from the first time. And that's a step in. Right. You ask yourself, do I like this person? That is something that you have to think about. Approach the person, talk to the person, try to have an understanding where the person is coming from, you know, their identities, their culture, you know, what they like, you know, what they do for fun, you know. Don't be so intrigued about what they do in terms of where they work, how much they earn, you know, it makes your life so complicated, you know. So if you build this relationship from liking the person, getting to and don't get me wrong, when you become emotionally connected, what is going to happen right now? You will look for convenience. So mm -hmm. I believe in the fact that love should come first. The emotional part of it, the intimacy should be there first. Have you ever thought of the fact where you meet somebody and they don't tell you that they're President Parvia's daughter or something, and they try to keep it low profile, and then you hang out, you hang out, then you fall in love, and then the day they reveal their real identity to you, you go crazy. Then there's intimacy. But I have a problem with that. Why should you hide your identity anyway to begin with? Why should you hide when, who you are? Because that so means I'm falling in love with something else. No, it's not a bad thing. Some people just think that they feel insecure when they look at you, they think that the reason why you're coming to them is because of the reputation that we spoke about. You're coming because of convenience. So they want to make sure that you are coming to them for the right reasons. Ladies this day, they hate, they hate men that come for convenience. They want to make sure that you're coming for the right reason. So it's not like they're not going to tell you where they come from, but they're not going to tell you that I earn $10,000, I take home $10,000 a month, my dad is, is, is President Obama, and all, they're gonna tell you that. They're gonna tell you all you want to know, their age, you know, where they come the from, baby. perhaps, mm -hmm, where they stay. But at the end of the day, the more the- Okay, see, you know what? That I'm, can happen. I'm fine with you hiding your- I'm going to reveal it's a positive thing. But if you're hiding your identity, then to come out and reveal something like, oh, you know what, what I didn't tell you was, you know, I have three other kids that I didn't share. Now that's not a cool thing. That's, 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 uh, that's not a positive kind of hype. I think you should reveal those things up front so the person understands that this is the package I'm dealing with. Versus if you're hiding information like, you know, maybe you're, you're this wealthy guy or you're this, you know, this chick who has a whole lot of money or you have an inheritance somewhere, you know, you're hiding that. I can understand it. That's a positive. But if you're hiding negative stuff and then just to reveal that, I feel like that's going to destroy the relationship later on. So yeah. it has to be a good thing. Absolutely right. We're talking about the positives in this case because, you you know, we, we have a lot of smart guys out there, you know, that outsmart the women because they just want to come for convenience. But we're talking about the positives, you know. She's not going to hide the fact that she, she, she has two kids, you know. She's not going to hide that. She's not going to hide the fact that she stays in, 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 in Virginia or so, but telling you about how much she earns or trying to tell you about the fact that she's one of the daughter of the richest African, it's not just going to work from the first day because she might just be afraid that this is for convenience, except she's also looking for convenience, you know. But we're trying to talk about a marriage that will not only last for two, three, four years, a marriage that will last eternally, you know. Hence, our argument right now is that people should get married for the right reasons. Get married out but of the emotions. the right reasons is a relative thing. So let me look, let's look at it this way. So if your parents give you an embargo, 
and say, you know what, mm -hmm. uh, Bota, you are getting to, you're 30 years old now, so you need to marry. I need to, or they tell you, I'm growing older, so I need, I need to carry your children. So, right? So now that is demanded on you. They've, they've put a, a demand on you and say, you know what, I want you to marry by this December. And you show up with a woman. Where you, is that out of love or were you just finding that person to, to fulfill your parental, you know, obligations? Like your parents say, hey, I need you to bring this woman. And now you go find a woman. Was, is that really love? Did you find that love or, you know, you just, you just try to satisfy that goal? I think that you didn't find love. You're just trying to satisfy your parents. And that's, that's something that's killing the African society. You know, it's not everybody that has to get married. People mystify mm. marriage. My elder brother, uh, Libota Mako, he's an actor in Cameroon. There was a day he wrote on, on, on his profile that marrying an achievement is not an achievement. <laughs> we just, we, no, it's not. We're just trying to say that it's a choice. But all we're trying to do is that when you make that choice, make it correctly, you know, there are very, very successful, independent women out there that are doing extremely well. You know what I mean? Without marriage, okay. Without being married, you're single. I'm not gonna go get mm -hmm. married because uh, my dad just told me to get married. Well, but then again, that's yeah. you. That's your position. But there are people who have demands, like this year should not go by without you bringing home a wife. So now you're going out there strictly on obligation. It's just, so you have this list and it's just about whatever checks off this list and then you're good to go, right? So love is no longer a question. It's more about criteria. So that is a marriage of convenience. And there are many people who fall into that category. The marriage and and, and we're denouncing, we, we're not encouraging it. You know, there's no way we're going to say we denounce it. We're just saying we're not encouraging it because at the end of the day, there's a child support that you have to pay because convenience is no longer there. What you went in for is no longer there. The money is no longer there. You know, you got the paper that you wanted, you know, the repair. So at this stage, uh, you've made kids and all that. And what happens? These kids will tear apart. And then you start running from one cut to the other. You mess up your life. You've been with somebody for the past six years out of conveniency. And just when they're about to be repatriated, you don't love them anymore. The job or they're on probation, you don't love them anymore. But if it was built on a solid foundation of emotions and intimacy, no matter what happens, you will stand by that person and life will move on. Well, there's an argument that love is overrated. Some people say love is overrated because, you know, people profess the love. They say, you know what, I'm lo I love you, I'm crazy about you. But then the actions that should back up the love are not exhibited. You know, they're not manifested on a day-to-day -day basis. So in that case, you're like, so people would say, we have love, but there's no money. Like we are, we are broke. And a lot of times you understand that people could have married sincerely for love, but when there's no, no decent finances to support that marriage, when crisis steps in, there's illness and all of that, then it becomes a problem. So is, is, love, that, is, is love overrated then? Yeah, I think, I think it's overrated. We, we're not going to take advantage and, 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 and go lazy, sleep sleep more than 10 hours uh, because uh, really work like that. We're saying that convenience is, is very, very important, but we're just saying that you have to prioritize the emotional part of it, you know. When you get married out of love, the next thing you have to do is to make sure that you're comfortable with your partner. You have to be selfless. You have to be, be, be willing to make sacrifices. That is when convenience comes in, you know. Each and everyone has to be comfortable, you know. You need to make sure that you have shelter, not any kind of a shelter. You need to make sure that your kids can have food. You need to put bread on the table. Then convenience become key. But then all we're trying to say is that when it begins on convenience, it's very difficult to get, to, to, to get into emotions at a later stage. But when it begins with emotions, it's quite easy to get into convenience and last longer and forever. Well, but what if it began with convenience and then you learn to love? Because love, I mean, you can learn to love someone. If someone is providing and meeting your needs and everything, maybe you can learn to love them, right? So yeah, it's the question, convenience the question. turned emotional. So. <laughs> and, and, and let me ask you, the question now is, when he stops providing your needs, what happened? Okay, so that's the point where um, the convenience is <laughs> When he stops buying right. the Gucci and the Gucci's and the Versace's, what happens? Well, um, you resort to, uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the argument is that maybe at that point you would have learned 
to love them and you may have fallen in love with them over the years. I mean, it's, you know, love is probably a function of habit. You know, you spend enough time with someone and then you start, you start liking them. You start admiring things about them. I mean, haven't you seen situations where that there are people that, you know, you met them, you know, the first time there was no connection, you know, and then you meet again a second time and then you start spending more befriend them and then before you know it the you know so-called love comes into play so it's the same thing you could be spending time with someone because you know they're meeting certain needs and then because you're spending more time you start falling in love mm -hmm. love comes into play mm -hmm. all right um uh, uh Didi, there, there yeah. is abundant grace that says marriage is god made not man-made, so it should not be treated as a thing of convenience or a contract thing. Absolutely, I, I, I think I agree with abundant grace, and more or less, that's where I come from, you know, because convenience simply means it's something that has, uh, uh, it, it's got a limit, you know, because if you get married for reputation, there's, there's a limit to that. If you get married because of Gucci, Versace, they, 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 there's going to there's gonna be a time that's that someone the consequences, someone might not be able to afford those for child research and, and what happens. I also accept with Didi that uh, getting to know somebody because of convenience, because they're treating you well and staying with them for a long time can lead to love. But the whole idea is that, is that going to be everlasting? If it's everlasting, then we do have exceptional cases, and I do say yes. But talking about the society that I live in, the society that I live in, the experiences, empirical analysis that I know, it doesn't really work. I can name cases. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to do that. But if we are true to ourselves, we would we would look around and say, "Hey, the man be gay, but the man of fame. That man be sick. They get three picking. That way, they, they put that man for konenge. That guy vanish. The man be a lot. Yes. It's, it's, it's it's countless. You know, it's countless. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I I respect I respect your position on that. Hey guys, if you are just joining, uh, welcome to the conversation. Uh, this is your girl, Diane, the host of DD Talks. And my guest for today is Petit Libota. He's based out of Texas. We're talking about marriage. And the question is, should you marry for love or for convenience? And, you know, we, we it's a lit conversation. I'm seeing the chat board, a lot of comments coming through. And I see Sebastian is beyond human understanding. That's always what uh, we see. Uh, when someone something doesn't have a good answer, you're right in terms of convenience. But let me let me throw you back. I know someone abundant grace talked about marriage is a thing of God. So if that's if you're coming from a Christian perspective, right? So marriage is is godly. It's div it's a divine institution. But now let's say there are people who come from other cultures, other denominations, where it's not about the it's not about uh, the God is not necessarily based on the Christian values, right? Where it's about um, let's say like the Hindu culture or the Indian culture, the tradition. There are other cultures where you'll be thrown, right? Where they seek, you know, where they they marry you based on compatibility. This family looks at you and say, "Hey, this girl looks like she will be a fit for my son." Or this family says, this guy will be a fit for my daughter. So love has nothing to do with it. This is purely, and their marriages tend to, they're actually lasting. So if you have a situation where the, that culture is does not go with love, it's arranged marriages. You know, my family agrees to give you their, their son or vice versa. And you have, you know, we have living parents who married their spouses with those same values where it wasn't about love and those parents are still together today. That was a uh, question of convenience. Did he, yeah, the, the, that's, that's for convenience. You know, they want to keep what Nigerians say, saw name, you know, we're going to get married. Uh, if you want to get married in Nigeria, they ask you, who is he? What's, what, what's in your soul name? They want to know if you have one of those big names, you know, the chiefs. That's what I call institutionalized marriage in such marriages is simply because they don't have a choice they don't have an alternative you know no but what if that is the way your culture uh marries each other that's that's what you you come up you grow into that into that culture that they don't know love you are not supposed to fall in love you're not supposed to date one another so that is that is that is, that is why we have um uh, uh, what we call women empowerment. We have institutions today trying to fight for the right of women, you know, 
I know a lot of cultures in Africa, most especially that where women are being mutilated, you know. It's not out, it's not, it's not, it's not out of what of the, of love, you know. I've I've met friends, I've sat in conferences where we've talked about this and I've seen women crying, you know. We've had women seeking for asylum in different countries because of the way they were treated back home based on institutionalized marriages, you know. You have mm -hmm. to get married to this man because he's a chief. This man is older, you know, he's like 20 years older than you. They mutilated you and right now they tell you you have to get married to this man because of uh, traditional norms and, 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 and cultures, you know. That is something that we've, 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 we've been talking against and you would agree with me that any woman that's thinking correctly would want to flee from such a, a, a society. And, and that's why we have a lot of women talking today about the rights of a woman. You know, you have the right to be loved and you also get right for come. Why are you going to let me not come? I understand, you know, um, Libota, be, uh, keep in mind that uh, some of the audience are not from Cameroon. So, you know, uh, <laughs> let's, let's avoid PG just for now, for the for references sake, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, but, but um, I understand, but in this case, you're talking maybe Africa and, and you know, there are other, other cultures that still practice that. But let's talk, let's go to Asia, perhaps, where it is, that's all they know. That is what their tradition says about marriage, that issue. And I know that there are some of them who elope because, you know, they maybe, should you say, too emancipated or too exposed. They've adopted a Western culture. And, and they believe that, you know, there's no reason why I should be compelled to marry someone just because my family says so. But if that's all you know, and you find yourself in such, in such a marriage where your family thinks it's time for you to marry and they, they agree on this spouse and then you only meet them when the family has agreed that you guys are right for each other. And then now you just have to make it work. And then they learn to make it work and they, make, and they survive with it. So that's a situation of convenience. I mean, are the cultural nuances a factor, you know, that should be considered, you know, is that even happiness or they're just, make, they're just creating happiness because my culture says this. Anyway, you, it ties into your argument though, we're talking about rights, you know, because maybe, maybe because of the evolution of time, we're now living in an era where, you know, you don't, you're not exposed to, so you're exposed to way too much. And I think that people should start incorporating those things even into their tradition. So it may be outdated. Well, Didi, this, this is very interesting, you know, and that's that's why I I think your show is very commendable because you um, you you're not only contextual in terms of African society, you know, you cover the world at large. Now it, 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 it's 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 another school of thought, you know. Basically, my argument was really based on on an African context within an African okay. context. But right Nothing now, talking that. talking about Asia, I mean, in China, once you're growing up, you know, there's already a man or a woman waiting for you. You're just waiting for that day, the right day to say okay, and your parents are just gonna hook you up. In that case, those are it's 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 an institution. I mean, it's it's their customs and tradition, and I think that they have to learn on how to go with it, you know, but we might also have exceptional cases where they might go within boundaries. You know, we've had cases in Saudi Arabia where those women, uh, they're told that you cannot drive, you cannot do this, you know, they, they try to escape, you understand? Right. So <laughs> overall, irrespective of where you find yourself in the world, I don't think you'll be happy because you have not made that personal decision. Think yeah, about the world now. The, the world right now is a global village, right? So it is. there's a lot of communication. You know, you don't only communicate with somebody in your within your society. You communicate with people uh, within the international community. So in that case, you are left behind. Whereas there is somebody just out there which, uh, that you like, but you don't have that opportunity to express your emotions. So that's a huge problem, and I just think that the unfortunate, you know. But I, I would not, I would not um, criticize uh, people's traditions and custom. But coming from where I, 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 I am, African, I, I'll say it's a problem. <laughs> you know, that conversation is really, we can carry that into another debate, quite frankly, because, I mean, there are pros and cons to, to that culture. Because, you know, if you're living like in an America today where dating is becoming a hassle, you know, um, too many criteria, too many books to read, you have to read a manual and there's no one 
fix theory of how it should work, you know, like which which strategy. So you go to one seminar and they say, this is what you should do to satisfy the man. This is what you, the men read. The men come, come up with different arguments of this is what it should be. You know, this is what they're looking for. And, and so when you're coming from that conflicted perspective, sometimes it may be convenient to just, you know, wait on your family to find you somebody. You know, just say, hey, you know what? I, I don't have to worry because marriage is, is, you know, includes the family anyway. It's two families coming together. It's not just one individual. Yes, the two find love and then they come together and then travel the journey. But you still bring the families together. Right, the in-laws and outlaws. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're perfectly correct. But uh, overall, I think that the reason why, uh, even 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 talking about this convenience and all, there's no way we're gonna talking about African community. There's no way we're gonna get out of this because, in most cases, because of poverty, you know, because of poverty, uh, our parents mm -hmm. will tell us that you cannot get married to this person. This person, you know. Um, I'd rather think that you get married from somebody that is, is overseas. That way you can make our life better. You know, even when you see a school guy that you all went to school together, thinking that this is my first love, this is somebody I want to be with, but we stuck by their home and cannot get a job or anything, you know, they would not encourage you to get married to that person. Then they're breaking your heart because it's out of love that you want to be with that person. But at right. the end of the day, you would have to go out of that because you want to mar get married to survive the family. You want to put food on the table. You want to um, uh, relocate your parents in a better house and all that. So for that reason, convenience steps in. So in as much as I'm trying to put up this debate, I know that <laughs> practically. <laughs> well, that's being practical, right? You're being practical about the facts that you're, you're, being, you're facing, your reality. And so yes. sometimes because of your reality, you're compelled to. So one question somebody asked was, does convenience then equal settling? So where, if you go for convenience, it means you're itemizing things, right? You're running down through, you're running through a list. And does that mean you're settling? Let me read some comments here because I think there's some very interesting comments here. So um, Evie says, in most cases, those parents help uh, the, 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 to keep their marriages. Okay, in the, in the I guess she's referring to the terms of cultural, differences like the indian culture yeah the family is putting money together and help them begin their marriage even like the jewish right um i'm just trying to see uh the, the last comment says so what are you saying the butter is it is it that uh shut back you should stop kidding stop stereotyping people okay so he has a, a problem with you stereotyping i think that's we'll come back to the comments a little bit later because they're not sequential at the moment but guys if you're just joining us i'm having a very lead conversation with Petili Bota, we're talking about marriage and a lot of people, I know you, anybody, some of you watching may have found yourself in marriages that were, were circumstantial, that were, you, were, you married for convenience. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's your situation. Some people say, marry for whatever works for you. If that's what works for you. Someone even said, what if it's a situation of you're married for rent Should, or you're trying to get your mortgage taken care of? If you have a situation where you need bills taken care of or you want to subsidize your bills, is that a good reason to get married? But there are people who are doing it. It's cheaper for me to move in, let's say, with a, with, a, with, a, with a guy because it means I have less bills, right? There are situations like that. What about the elephant in the room, which is having a, a baby, a pregnancy? You know, you have a lot of people who are marrying because a baby has come into the picture. You know, so is that enough reason to um, say I do? Should people go to the altar just because, you know, oops, a baby popped in and now you want to marry? Or was there love in the beginning to to begin the conversation, to begin the whole story anyway? Maybe the, the baby came earlier than the I do, but is a baby, having a baby, a good enough reason to marry? Um, I mean... It, it is, it is, because even the Bible says that uh, a man and a woman, a man will leave his house, get married, and, and procreate, procreation, you know, uh, reproduction. So what we're trying to say here is that we, we're, not, uh, we're not trying to stereotype, you know, it's a conversation, and I have the right to, to say where I stand, you know, taking of into course. consideration my, my experience, okay? Right. And I also have to, to analyze from a general perspective, so... Uh, not trying to be stereotyped. So um, 
I would say that um, if you're getting married just because you want to make babies, it's not the right reason. It's not the right reason no. because... And when I'm talking about you're married because you want to make babies, I'm saying that yes, two people you're dating and then a baby... How you feel obligated to marry them. Or you have situations where a girl is pregnant, she comes home and her parents say, you know what, you're going to marry that guy. Or they tell the guy... This girl is not going anywhere because you made her pregnant. You're going to have to make it work, right? So now there's a mandate on that guy, like you must marry this girl because you got her pregnant, right? So is that a function of love, like real love, or was it, you know, it happened. I mean, we know a lot of the situations. Should people marry Hell, hell no. <laughs> no. No, but you're no. responsible for the act. You should understand that if you, if you, if you were playing, if let's say the guy was playing with a chick and he had unprotected sex, he should understand that those are consequences of of premarital sex, right? So he should also be able to step in. But the question is, for being a father to that child, my question though is, if a child is brought into the picture, is that a reason why? a couple should marry because those are some of the reasons when we're talking about convenience they may be thinking it's economical to raise that child together but then a lot of times you find out before you blink there's a second child in the picture and there never really was love the worst thing that can happen is that you're compelled to get married simply because um because of carelessness because you cannot be you cannot take precautionary motive during sex you conceive a baby and you don't want to appreciate but it's not a crime to be a single parent. We have successful single parent out there. Now, if you make this baby and get married to this person, this person doesn't love you. You don't want to be fighting every now and then in front of the kids. Hell no. You don't have to do that. You don't have to put the, a beautiful home. It's a home that mom and daddy are so happy. They're in love. And then the kids come in because to have a successful marriage, it's something that I was going to say, uh, but let me just say right now, to have a successful marriage, to make it work, you got to put your partner first before the kids. So right now, if you got married because you were being compelled and then the kids are there, it means you don't put your partner first. So you put the kids first. So what happens in the bedroom is going to translate into emotional blackmail. Um, it's going to translate into uh, fighting. It's going to uh, uh, translate into domestic violence. And that's why you see many girls are not happy. You see them in a the big home. Um, the kids go to school, but she's not happy. And then you keep asking questions. And at the end of the day, when you sit with your friends, I didn't like this person. I was compelled to marry her because by mistake, <clears throat> I got her pregnant. So it's a no for me because that is and convenient. I think it's disrespectful for someone to, to go out there and say, you know what, I just married you. It's almost like you married them out of pity. So you feel like, you know, obligation, like if the, if the, if the baby says, uh, they say shotgun marriage, you know, where you're obligated, it's almost like there's a bullet in your man, you know, like, hey, if you don't do this, then, you know, there are consequences of this. So it's almost like, which is the better option? Some people say, you know what, I would just rather give, you know, give marriage a try, or maybe because the statistics are bad anyway, right, of marriage, some people say the statistics are bad, so I may just, I just want to marry, you just want to marry because... You just want to experience it. You, you, whoever makes a proposal, you say, hey, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and, and just try anyway. If, 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 the, if the odds are 50-50, you and, and those who, who started off with love are divorced and those who started out, out of convenience are divorced. So, so the, the odds are against everybody. So you might as well just do it because it's on the table. Well, uh, because of the challenges that we have in life today, you know, the society is, it's a capitalist society. People have to look after each other. So you want to have somebody that will be able to meet you halfway. I would say the convenience, it overshadows the emotional part of it right now as we speak. But it doesn't stop us from saying what, what, what is, what is uh, realistic, what, what should happen, what we think and that should be the proponent of a good and a long-lasting marriage, you know. So <laughs> I, I think that it's left for an individual 
to to weigh the options, you know. <laughs> Maybe you, if, if you think that you're 50 years old and it's time for you to make a baby, you're running out of age. I mean, and then you think that you want to go to a Ben 10 for convenience because you want um, to make a baby or something. That's all for you. But we are saying that in a normal society where everything is 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 um, is equal, it, we don't we don't have a society like that. But we assume it. This is a really don't. That's that's idealistic. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's in the movies. We don't live in that society anymore. <laughs> Maybe some time to come in Norway and Sweden, it, it's going to be that kind of a society. But all we're saying is that um, you, you have to decide what you want in life. I, I made my decision out of emotions. And right now, convenience is coming to play. So it's a blend of emotion and convenience. And I'm happy. And that's why I've, keeping, I've been keeping it for 11 years. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm really so proud of you. You're a young guy and, and you're living in the Western society. You know, you're still, you're surviving all the odds, you know, and the fact that you are really an example, right, of, of what, ma that marriage can work on those Thank foundations. You. That if you have uh, the right foundation of love, because, you know, you started out really young, you know, you met as students and then you, you actually fell in love. You went through the, the proper channels, right? And, and you're making it work. So I say congratulations and kudos to you. My Thank prayer you. for you is that, you know, you do do the forever thing together, you know, grow all together and, and just enjoy the marriage. I mean, it's people like you that, you know, inspire others to say, you know what? No, it's not lost and everybody, it's not bad in all cases. And so and as a pillar of, of, as a role model to, those aspiring to get into marriage. And I like the fact that you're arguing strongly, advocating strongly for love, you know, because honestly, a lot of people are dealing with situations where, you know, you just have to do it for circumstances, be it for money or be it for convenience. We, you know, we live in a country, at least for those of us who are, let's say, um, in the diaspora, right? You find yourself, you may be removed. I mean, America as it is, is a, it's a tough, country i feel like as an adult it's meant to do it um with two people i think it's really designed to have like two incomes mm -hmm. Not with a lot, i mean they're they're championing a lot they're carrying a lot on them right especially if you're doing parenting single i think it's a it's a it's a it's a challenge to do it and, and for all of you who are here and who may be doing the journey alone as in being a single parent or maybe you, you're divorced and everything i say you know i know i understand your burden i know that it's challenging as it is to to live alone and then to have a dependent you know those things are, are difficult but i also i i am an advocate for love i personally am a, i believe that love should be something that's considered but as i also mature i also believe that you can't just love foolishly they say he who finds a wife, right, finds a good thing. But the question is, he who finds. So when you are not the one who found it, when you didn't find it, and it was either thrown at you or it was done to you, I think that's where the nuances begin to occur, where it just it just stumbled on you. That's not necessarily finding, right? So finding is like you're actually going out there, digging the, in, at the farm and searching and then falling on it. So... But for, for my disclaimer to all of you out there is that I am actually a proponent of falling in love. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic like that. But, you know, for sake of, you know, being intellectually uh, argumentative, you have to look at all the angles. You have to look at both sides because those are the realities that we face and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. There must be a reason why people continuously divorce. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not going to marry uh, just anybody now. You know, just because I'm in love. Mm -hmm. First of all, mm -hmm. I, you know, <laughs> love <laughs> at some point it becomes a decision. Your love heart could be, your heart could be <laughs> responding to someone, <laughs> but you have to consciously decide that I want to allow it to grow, or I want to nurture that love, or I don't. In other words, like when you find out other things about the person, you say, you know what? Hey, nah, -uh, you don't deserve that love right and you retract it so in other words yes i believe in love but you know you also have to consider um the elements you have to be realistic mm -hmm. like 
or working hard. Just like what you said earlier, if you, if you have an investment, you have things that you've been working so hard on, you're looking at, if you bring this person, are they going to destroy everything that you just built? Or are they going to come at you and they're not believing in your dreams? You know, they don't, they don't, they're not an advocate of, of your path, your vision, where you're headed in life. They're there to subtract instead of addition. It should be something where it's an added value, not a takeaway. You know, so if it, if, if it starts sounding like that, I think you ought to walk away from it, no matter how in love you are. That's, that's right, uh, Didi. And Didi, you see, um, when, when I got to the Western world, there's a lot that I realized that um, you find people that have divorced like six times. It's very normal. It's and very... they said they were in love with all kids. <laughs> And that, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they went in for some reason. It did not work out. So, and, and even when they turn 50, they're still single and they're still searching. And when they manage to find somebody, they can even go for adoption, you know. So it, it, it really, it, it's a broad topic. It's, it's an open-ended debate. It, we can bring all kinds of experts. They're going to argue from different ends, different angles. But at the end of the day, you will wear the shoes. You know where it pinches. That's that's the way mm -hmm. that's the way I want to look at it, right? He right. that wears the shoes, no way it pinches. So that's that's the way. It's just about a matter of choice. Be it a polygamist, monogamist, because somebody spoke about what kind of marriage are we talking about? Is it a polygamy, monogamy? We're just talking about marriage. Oh, polygamy. By the way, since we're talking polygamy, you have Kenya just passed a law that they're allowing the the women. The, matter of fact, they are. Polygamy is becoming legal. So in Kenya, I think the shortage of men is becoming a real crisis. So the women petitioned and the government has granted them access like, hey, men can now legally be polygamous, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that, that's going to play out into the dynamics of the society. Less infidelity, because I mean, if, if the problem is the man is not uh, satisfied with one woman and now you're officially tied to maybe two women, should you go and embrace a third and by getting a third does that mean you're being unfaithful to the other two you know so it becomes complex right <laughs> it, it's very complex i mean we, <laughs> we, also saw a situation, we also saw a situation in eritia eritia um i think that was about 2012 where the government compelled men to go after many women you know and they were ready to subsidize marriages you know because of the shortages of men and and, right. and that's why we have a lot of conveniency going on right now because especially in the Western world, you find women that are very successful, but they lack companionship, they lack a partner. So at the end of the day, they will say, man, a man is a man. And, and you're compelled to go in for something that you don't like. But I'm telling my sister- You say a man is a man. Like, <laughs> now that's called settling. A man, a, man is, yeah, a man is a man in terms of, okay, he has all the cards and everything. And a woman is a woman. And a woman is a woman, right? You have all, <laughs> all the elements of being female. No, no, no. no. Men, men, men has got a lot of time in their hands. They, 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 they will hardly see works. And that's why you see the shortages of men. Even at 50 years, a man can still decide that I want a woman who is under 25. But it's hard, it's a, it's hard for a woman to make that decision. Because True. the shortages of men, unfortunately. But I mean, but the, the beautiful thing is that I, I feel like, you know, um, because we are so boxed up and I, and I think it's a school of thought where how we are raised and everything, I think people just need to expand their dating pool. Um, there may be a shortage of men, maybe in a particular group of people. Maybe if you're limited to, let's say, nationality, you only want to date people from your tribe or you only want to date people from your country. Well, of course, the pool is going to be narrow, right? But if you expand mm -hmm. your dating pool and say, you know what, like you said, a man is a man and you, you're just looking for someone who has all the attributes of what you desire and a companion, it wouldn't matter if they're Caucasian, it wouldn't matter if they're, uh, you know, Chinese, it wouldn't matter if they're, you know, from Haiti, it, it shouldn't matter. It's, you know, you, and especially if you're looking for love, if you fall in love with that individual, then, hey, you, you because you broaden your spectrum, then it allows you to to not find yourself in that box um, bracket, right? Absolutely, so say. absolutely, absolutely correct. There, there are so many comments. It's amazing. I've not been able to read them. Abundant Grace, I love your comments. I've been reading your comments. They are so lit. I know you're talking about uh, you should find a, 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 the godly wife. 
and not the one that Hollywood is creating. You, in other words, not, not, don't be superficial about your desires. Have unrealistic expectations. So here you are, you don't have, so you don't even, you're not bringing anything to the table, yet you have this long list of what you're expecting from the other person. So I think people should be fair about the expectations too, right? So if you know you are X, Y, Z, don't be going about, I mean, not, nothing stops you from having big expectations in life. But at the same time, be realistic that mm -hmm. if you're a, a, a king of this country, most likely you're going to be looking at queens from this other nation. You're not going to be coming down at another degree, right? So in other words, people are more likely to stay in, in their social strata or their economic strata. And so do not eliminate your, limit your options by not elevating yourself. So if you're looking for somebody in a certain bracket, my philosophy is elevate yourself. Maybe if you means, you know, work harder, increase your financial leverage so that you're exposed to people in that bracket, it also expands your options. You cannot tell yourself that you're looking for a banker or an engineer and you want to stay to be a hairdresser. I mean, hairdressing is something good, but I'm just saying, even if you're a hairdresser, you need to step up your game. You know, you need to make it to be more professional. You know, you, don't, you have to move from the roadside and make it more professional. That way... Yeah, have like a you professional say, facility. Then you, at that point, you are a business owner. You know, so yeah. you, 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 you make it a career path. You know, like you say, you, you professionalize it have business cards, and then it's a respectable path, right? So, but what you're saying is if you're trying to be a banker, um, you can't stay in a particular place, right? If you're trying to be the same class of people, you're going to have to find yourself in that level. And how do you find yourself in that level? Is to elevate yourself. But don't Empower be here. Yourself. Yeah, don't be here and wanting an unrealistic thing where you're never in their circles and then you're expecting it to happen. I'm just saying people should learn to be realistic. Either you're overstepping or understepping. So in the case of understepping is there are people who are overly qualified, overly achieved, but then they find themselves having to reverse date. Like you have to date backwards because you don't find anybody in this niche. Is that a case of settling? Where maybe you have somebody, maybe there's a woman who's a PhD, but now she doesn't find anybody who's in that bracket and now she maybe has to date somebody uh, who is, what can I say? Maybe a blue collar, I don't know. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying blue collar is wrong, but I'm just saying what if you find yourself now having to reverse date? All right, Didi, uh, that, that's a very important thing that you talk. I'm going to speak about myself, right? My, my wife, my wife is PhD, you understand? So I told myself that um, I'm not going to just hang on on bachelors, you know, I got to step up my game, you understand? So I went for my post-grad simply because I wanted to find myself in a situation where I can engage myself in an, in, in, in an argument, in a, in a constructive, in an intellectual debate with my wife. My path is the entertainment world, you understand? PhDs, most of them in quote, um, especially in the educational field where she is, it's mostly research, you know, they're very constructive, they kind of lay back, they're too professional, you know. But now, for me to make my relationship work, I have to find a blend between entertainment and intellectualism. You understand? So right. the, certificate, the certificate might not be to that level, but I try to narrow the gap so that we can have a conversation about what is going on in the society. You know, we can have a conversation about what is uh, ecosystem. We can have a conversation about current um, um, happenings in the world. That way, when you sit at home, you have something to do. So I also work hard to end my relationship. It's a two-way thing, just like you're saying. You understand? So Boy, I give you kudos for that. I, I completely respect that. <laughs> I completely, you know what? I like, I like that you're playing all out honest about that point. Because, you know, there are people who say, you know what? I'm this PhD, but you don't want to marry this guy who is maybe starting out. And maybe it's because, you know, you travel to another country and maybe you have to start out afresh. The problem though is when you do that and this man does not want to elevate himself and then they make you feel guilty for your accomplishment. In other words, they, they throw this thing like, oh, is it because you're this? You're talking to me because of this. So you see, you cannot, you cannot have an, you cannot 
have an intellectual discussion with that kind of person who is locked, who is stagnant in a place. So but when you have somebody who is headed somewhere, you are a guy who has vision and you understood that because my wife is growing at this pace, I need to catch up. You know, I mean, honestly, you need to be talking to some brothers, you know, seriously, because <laughs> this is a real thing where the woman has suddenly is overeducated. And I'm sorry, but education opens up your mind and it opens up your mind and opens up your world. So you cannot under, um, once you know something, you cannot un unknow it. Yeah, you can't absolutely it because you're trying to mm -hmm. feed somebody's ego. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I would not want to sit and, 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 and play the blame game, you know, because of this, that, no, you know, I try to empower myself so to narrow the gap. So I would like to use your platform to advise people that it's never too late to learn something, you know, and the best way you, 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 you narrow that gap, try to have something in common, you know, talk something out of love things that are happening within your society, things that are happening back home, how you uh, you aspire your kids where you want them to be in the next 10 years, you know, and always make sure that every year you have a plan of action. Hey, baby, next year I'm going to take you to New York, even if you know there's no means. Hey, next year you have to be driving a BMW. I promise you uh, in 2014 we have to go on holidays in Australia. All those things keep you going, you know, even if... <laughs> They say where where there's a wish, there's a there's a means. There's a way, yes. Yeah. There's a way. So just by saying it, it keeps the relationship moving. But if you're laid back and you think that um, your husband is a PhD and you're just a first school living and you cannot do anything, then you're absolutely wrong. So try and work on your relationship on a daily basis. The days that things are not gonna get well, you know, but keep pushing. And at the end of the day, it's no relationship without problems. But the, the issue right here is how do you manage such problems? That's where maturity comes in. You Absolutely. Understand? Absolutely. Yeah. And and you must not you must not um um, um debate or, or or get so angry when you're hungry. That's that's a key element because a hungry man is is, is an angry man. So mm -hmm. you will make rush irrational decisions. And at the end of the day, the police might come in, the neighbors might call, not necessarily your wife. So all these elements put together will build a strong marriage that will last forever. Absolutely. Um, but Tilly Bota, mm. I, I think I've kept you over an hour. I know you probably have activities to do, but the conversation, but you know you and I can talk like forever. <laughs> Guys, I, I, I mean, maybe you want to scroll through and see if there's any quick comment that you may want to respond to. Let's, okay. let's go ahead and look at that, and then I'll try to scroll back. Guys, this conversation, I think we may have to do a part two, you know, but we have essentially covered like different angles. I just believe that, you know, there's circumstantial marriages, there's marriage of convenience, whether we like it or not, there are people who continuously get into it. But if you find yourself in a marriage, can you at least uh, bring in the elements uh, to make it work? You know, try to figure out how you can find love in it. But if there's no love, you may not be able to sustain it. And then, of course, for those of you who are my Christian folks, where you bring God into your marriage, I feel like, you know, it doesn't even have to be Christian. You, if you bring spirituality into your marriage, the Holy Trinity and everything, if you bring that into your marriage, it, it, it helps to breathe a better ground, you know, for your union. So incorporate God, <laughs> spirituality in your marriage. I think it will help you uh, sustain that, that foundation that you have together. Find as many common grounds in your relationships as possible. I see you cracking up. I think you're reading some of the comments and you're just enjoying through them. Guys, you know, uh, if you're just joining me today, this is uh, your host, mm -hmm. Diane Diamond <laughs> on Beauty Talks. And my guest today was uh, Petili Bota. By the way, I want to talk about, you know, I'm also a brand ambassador for Zelani, uh, Zelani Beauty Products. You know, that's actually the lipstick that I'm wearing right now. You know, so it's a matte lipstick. Mm, I hope you like it. And if you want it, you may want to go to ZolaniBeauty.com and find, you know, get yourself, you know, some lipstick um, and, and, and get this product. It's really good. They have a plethora of uh, beauty products that you can want. And we're always, always, always looking for sponsors to keep the doors open. You know, to, if you like the content that we're putting out there and you want to keep us in business, please be a sponsor of the DT Talk Show. 
We have a media facility. We do podcasting. We take programs. If you have a voice, you have a message, a story that you need to be told, and you're just looking for a platform, guess what? We have the platform for you. So you can bring your programs here from music, sports, politics, drama, whatever. We have more than three studio rooms to incorporate your programs. So make sure you bring your content here and we can accommodate you and take your message out to the universe. I also want to use this opportunity to talk about Petit Libota is going to be launching his own show, right? He has his own new program. He's going to be a talk show host as well. So colleagues to colleagues, uh, colleagues on multiple levels, we do can say we do entertainment. So we can just want to get welcoming you into the world of talk show as well. You know, he's going to be having a show. I think, what what day is that? Uh, on the 8th, Friday, the 8th of November. Okay, so Friday the 8th is his day. Make sure you go out and follow him. Follow his page, and so that I mean, you heard his discussion. You know, his show is going to be lit. And his first guest is also another uh, very lit personality, all the way in the UK. So you make sure you want to follow. So put that on your on your timeline. Register that, and make sure you join his uh, show next week, Friday. All right. So guys, uh, did you want to take an opportunity to respond to any of the comments that you may have read? I, I mean, guys, I'm loving your feedback today. Knowledge gain can ever marriage. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to say, uh, Iman, do meilleur de meilleur if bébé dal, uh, et tel a te clarice, son majiji, all the way from South Africa, Pentefa in UK, Bibila Collins in Mexico, Abundant Grace. I want to thank you all for your phenomenal participation, you know. I feel so elated for you to give us uh, an hour listening to what we've got to say. I want to thank you, DT Talk. You know, I've always loved everything about you right away from Africa. I used to follow you and you, I sir. like the way, I like your packaging. It's professional, you know. We learn from people like you and, and I just want to say keep up and where we think we will support you, we will not hesitate. Ice Elvis in Maryland, you're always there for me. Fervent fan of Petili Bota. I thank you all very much. I don't have anything to say. Most of the comments, they just saying 100% good points. Uh, child support is cheaper than divorce. I don't know what to say about that. That's another debate. <laughs> oh my God. Some people say it's cheaper to keep her than to divorce her. <laughs> You know, especially when you're talking about three, four children, well, you're going to have to figure out how that marriage will work, right? It's better to stay married. <laughs> so that, that would be a marriage of convenience right there. You don't want to pay the child support. Thank you, Didi. I'm so impressed. All right, All right guys. Um, thank you so much for your time. This was actually like on the spot. You took out special time just to come on this particular show today. Guys, we will be addressing, if you have any topics, that you think uh, the DD Talk Show should address, feel free to um, give me, inbox me, you know, send me suggestions. And then what I need for you guys to do is also go out and like my page. Just click DD Talks and like and follow our page so that when we come on live, you can, you can, you know, see us live, all right? So, uh, Libota, Petit Libota, I want to say, uh, say hi to Madame, all right? Say hi to your sweetheart. Thank her um, for keeping you happily married. And I'm glad that you're honoring your vows and keeping her as a happy bride as well. You know, I wish you all the best. And of course, with everything, all your undertakings, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing well and adjusting to America as well. And so thank you for coming on board. And guys, I will go back and read the comments. I think Libota might also respond to some of the comments because some things were directed to him as well. Later on, thank you guys for joining us. I personally um, like to sign off by always telling people one thing, that um, if no one has told you that they love you, guess who loves you? It's your girl, Diane. And I love you passionately with the love of God. It's been real. It's been a phenomenal hour. Don't go here in the bottom because I want to play you, uh, yeah, DJ Arafat. We're closing again with DJ Arafat. And then, and, and so meanwhile, you can you can be talking while I find my DJ. I'm my own DJ, okay? So mm -hmm. until I get uh, official help, I'm my own DJ. So. Hey, don't you have shares beats for me? Huh? <laughs> don't you have shares beats for me? Shares beats. Oh, oh really? Shares beats? How do you spell that? 
Dun 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 What do you tell you spell that? I don't know that. No, that's good. Just play what you have. Let's go. No, no, tell me, tell me, let me let me Google it. Okay, play Wallace. Wallace. Okay, Wallace as well. Is W O L O S O Wallace. Okay. Try if you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna get that one. It looks like it's a movie. Is that a song? Okay, play what you have. Play Arafat. Okay. It seems like it was a movie. Oh, then just just you need for our information to get the track. Just just play Arafat. Do you have an old taste? Because Wallace is sounding like Wallace is Mundila Mundile Mundile Ayo Arakata Kuta Kurakata Kuta Kurake. Oh no, can you play out of the one that you had before? <laughs> Cannot be it. This cannot be it. Anyway, guys, you know we're trying to find the song, but I can't. I can't find the song that you were talking about. I have to. I don't you know. Play out of the w, one that you have? Was it W A or W O? W O. Oh. Okay, it came up. For the meantime, I want to thank everybody that uh, connected today on the DD Talk Show. It's been awesome having you online. You know, I do have nine o'clock in Texas, and right now, um, I don't even know what time it's going to be in Cameroon. That's why we don't have a lot of people viewing from Africa. But I'm pretty sure that tomorrow we could do a watch. And there you go. <laughs> I found a song. Yeah. <laughs> volume, volume. Huh? Volume. It's very low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonsoir tout le monde, l'ambiance qui commence. Tout bon? Allez, les gars, 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 les gars,